Hey, right, what's up, guys? Uh, gonna do something a little bit different. This is a request for Sean SVS. Want me to run some laps in Mercedes, and I wasn't doing anything in this particular hour, so I thought I'd do it. So a little extra free time. So here I am. This should be interesting because I haven't driven this car for like a month and a half, basically, since it came out. So. No idea what my setup's like. And yeah. Let's go see what happens. Just my force feedback, getting it away from clipping. A little bit cooler weather. Um, regular sessions are open, so I thought I'd just pick one. So this is 32 degrees, so there should be plenty of grip on the track. I was just like any time gonna slowly get warmed up. Nice thing is I kind of have a general sense where my braking point should be, so I'll use those I used in the Audi. It's like the gearing's a little bit different in this car. I don't think I've driven this car since it got updated. Now that I think about it. Honestly, it's feeling pretty doggone good right now. So I'm just fine-tuning the force feedback a little bit. This actually feels like it's turned a little bit better than the Audi was. It's got a better initial rotation. Got good rotation through the middle and off the corner. Of course this is a little bit cooler weather so it might have to do with a little more front grip. Don't really know. Can't say for sure, that's all I know.
it's kind of coincidence because the track I, I think I well the setups from Silver sounds like one of like two tracks I've actually driven the car at, and that's where my Audi set was from so that just kind of worked out Seems like if you got a decent set of silver sound, you have a different, decent set of more sport, which is kind of funny because elevation wise, these tracks can't be more different. There's a roller coaster, and silver stone's like chessboard flat. So it feels pretty good right now, just nothing's popping out yet. If anything, it's maybe a little unstable. No rear end under braking. Not sure if that's a brake bias issue or suspension issue yet. Or if it's even an issue. Just like the way it rotates on throttle, it rotates without getting loose. See right there, it's a little squirrely when I get on the brakes. Alright, let's see what the tires are like. I guess I'll keep those there. I mean, maybe I'd like it down a cup, like, down three kPa, but actually, yeah, let's go down one click on these right sides. So that'll bring that down three. That'll bring that down four. So I should bring that to one eighty four. I'll bring that to one eighty four. 
might make these a little higher. I'd bring that down to 183. I'd bring that down to 183. So let's try that. Let's go down and click all around. Now, as far as trying to get that rear end a little more secure. Under braking. Let's go to the camera real quick here. All right, so what I'm going to do first thing I was thinking about was messing up the roll bar, but that's like too general uh, adjustment for me. So What's sticking out to me right now is doing some rebound stuff. Just gonna see what my oh. Which we kinda already have maxed out. Ah, uh, yes, the Audi and everything's the same. Or the Mercedes, and it's like holistic. You can only change front and rear springs. There's one unit. How quickly I forget. I can go one click on the front brake bias. I love that explanation. Default settings for traction control, in car control support dial. Settings 1 through 12 increase sensitivity. Well, duh. But is 12 the most sensitive or is 1 the most sensitive? What does most sensitive mean? Is more sensitive less traction control? Is sensitivity more sensitivity more traction control? That's about as vague an explanation as they can give you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, well, back to the rear end in their big descriptions, because God forbid they take an extra 10 minutes to write more than two sentences in a non-big manner. Let's see here, what's spring set three do? Two seven. Okay, so that softens up the rear springs. Let's do that. 
So between set one front springs are the same as set three's front springs. The only difference is in set one the rear springs are 250, set three the rear springs are 225. It's going to drop the rear end here, so let's watch that first. Oh, nope. Just kidding. So is it 191.4? What? Didn't drop the rear end? Okay, so is it 93.7? That went down to 91.2, 91.4, so it'll bring this up to 93.7 again, ish. Let's just go the south side of 193.7. So, the first thing is I softened up these rear springs. Um, I'll just talk about that first. So, my method behind that madness is by making these springs softer as this car is transitioning we're going through this left hander and then we're transitioning into the right hander right and at the same time you get on got to get on the brake so when i'm getting in the brakes on some of this weight still on the right side of the car uh, more of it's on this right tire as opposed to the left tire you get on the brakes and you start turning left it's going to transfer the weight to the left well, it seemed like it was transferring the weight a little bit too quick, and that's why it was causing the rear end to get a little loose. So with those softer springs now, this spring, now that it's softer, isn't going to have the same strength or amount of force to transfer this weight over to here as quick. So it's going to slow, it's going to soften up the rear roll center, and whenever you do that, you put a little more understeer in the car, but most importantly, it's going to slow this transitional weight from this side to this side. Um, so it, that instead of it just doing it in a faster movement, which creates more response, it's going to do it in a slower movement, which creates a little less response in this situation. I'm hoping for more security. Now, because I did that, I'm also going to... And of course, when you soften up the uh, rear springs, because the springs aren't as strong, they're not going to hold the car up as high, so that's why the rear end dropped a little bit. So I changed the spring perch to bring the rear end up uh, almost the same height as it was before. It is a little bit lower now. And what that does, it changes the rear center of gravity of the car. And that adjustment, instead of transferring how fast the weight is, instead of affecting how fast the weight's transferred. When you lower the car, you're actually affecting how much weight is transferred from side to side because you're changing the center of gravity of the car. You lower it, you're transferring less weight from one side to the other, and what that actually does is will give you a little bit more grip. Now, you can go too low, and it'll mess with the whole suspension geometry and have negative effects, but whenever the weight, say we're going to... F the car's going perfectly straight, and the weight's even on both sides. As we go into this corner, the weight's going to transfer to this side, and you're going to lose grip on the inside, and you're going to get more grip on the outside. Now, that grip, so say we're just going straight, this grip plus this grip, let's just say random numbers, 5 plus 5 equals 10, right? So this side has a 5 grip, this side has a 5 grip. When we go into this corner, the weight's being transferred from this side to this side, well, instead of it equaling 10, the overall grip, you're always going to lose a little bit of grip when um, the, this weight is transferred off this tire contact patch to this tire contact patch. So instead of it being 5 and 5, now this side's going to have more weight on it. We'll call it 6. Well, this side's only going to have 3. So 6 plus 3 equals 9. So you don't have the same grip levels. So whenever you can minimize how much weight you're transferring, Say before we drop this rear end, uh, it's 6 plus 3 equals 9. Now we drop the rear end a little bit, and it's 6 plus 3.5. So now we have a grip of 9.5, because we're not transferring as much weight. I hope that made some kind of sense. Next, because we softened up those rear springs, I'm also going to bring this number down a little bit. So I just have a more neutral uh, rebound dampening setting, so I have more adjustability in the car. So because we took this spring down in strength, 
First of all, let's just talk about what rebound dampening controls. As we're going from the left-hander to the right-hander, again, the weight's transferring from the right side of the car to the left side of the car. Rebound dampening controls the rate at which this spring releases from compression. So a higher number, it means the spring's going to release slower. There's more dampening in it. And it means the, transfer, the weight's going to transfer from this side to this side in a slower fashion. Less dampening means the spring's going to release quicker, so it's going to transfer weight from this side to this side, making it more responsive. Now, if you keep you change the springs, but you keep the dampening setter setting the same, because now this spring's now not as strong as it was before, but you have the same dampening setting, it's even going to tran it's going to even slow down the release of this spring even more because you don't have the same amount of force acting on the dampener. You, now you have less force acting on the dampener. So to kind of neutralize that, and again this is kind of a black art, a lot of guessing, but I'm taking some of that rebound dampening out to get back to a similar weight transfer that we had before. So I'm just trying to make this release at a similar rate as it was before. Maybe it's releases a little bit slower because now we have softer springs in and that's where you just got to figure out and run some laps and see how it feels. So let's see what we got. Bottom line, all I'm trying to do is get the car just a little more, have a little more grip in the rear end as we uh, are on the brakes and the weight's being transferred from one side to the other. We'll see what we got. And again, I put a little more brake price in the front. I always like to talk about that in extremes. So if you had full front brake bias, the front tires would lock up and they'd just slide. If you had full rear brake bias, it's like pulling the e-brake and the rear end would want to slide out on you. So I put a little more front brake bias to just give us a little bit more under steer when we're on the brakes, which just creates more stability in the car. Rand still kind of wants to step out on me there. And I was getting under the brakes. So I was kind of letting the car, you know, I was kind of pushing it a little bit more, letting it kind of do what it wanted to just to see what it would do. And it still kind of wants to step out on me there. So I might just put some more rebound dampening in there. Really don't need a lot of brake for that first corner. It's taking a little bit too much speed into that corner. I'm gonna slow down just a little bit on entry. Same with this corner. Just be a little more conservative. That was pretty good through there that time. I was a little more controlled that time, so it definitely felt pretty good through there. Nope, I'll probably add like one more click of rebound dampening, see how that feels. Just snug it up just a little bit in the rear end.
Yeah, okay, that was pretty good through there that time, speed wise. I just keep clipping that second curb on Apex. Can't do that. He just unsettles the car too much. Rhythm through that section. Very good line through that corner a little bit later, apex. Later, turn in. It's all right. Just a little hesitant on my turn in. So it float out a little bit wider. Ah, then I missed the second apex. But you see, I didn't hit that curb, and I even I'm even getting a better runoff, even though I went wide. Just because I was able to get the power down a little bit sooner. These new cars are just fun to drive. I'm really enjoying this right now. It's getting around here. Yeah, let's see, it's a little bit too fast. Alright. Make that one little adjustment to the rear rebound. Do one click so again we're just kind of slowing down how much weight's transferred from one side to the other as we're uh, getting into the corner. I'm also going to go down one click on the rear ride height. Just transferring by doing that we're again we're transferring just a little bit less weight from one side to the other. Uh, just putting more under steering to the car. So both these adjustments are putting more under steering to the car focusing on on the rear end side of things. Or doing it through the rear end I should say, as opposed to doing it through the front end, because you can, can do both. Same time I don't want to lose its car's ability to turn in and get through the middle of the corner and the way it gets off the corner I want to keep those characteristics at the same time so that's why I'm making pretty small adjustments because I think I'm pretty close to where I want the car right now I say the car doesn't feel as heavy as I remember it feeling when I first tested it. It's much more agile compared to the Audi. It was just I could really tell the difference in weight between the two cars when they first came out, but now not so much. I 
Everyone's starting to feel real good through there. Let's see. Pretty good line through there that time. Actually on purple in that sector. Gas a little too soon. Too fast. Definitely feels more stable on a trail breaking entry. It's not quite so twitchy. Definitely more stable getting on the brakes through there. And that was a perfect line, almost. Steering could have been better after I got through the second apex, but the line itself on entry was really good. I'm pretty good about the set right now. It's gone to gas too early. Had a lift. I really like how it's getting through that section now. It's just much more stable, a lot more confidence in the car. Subconscious downshift there on accident. That was a really nice line through there. Focused on a little bit later entry, later apex.
car got a little twitchy there, but I was really pushing it through there. Nah, I like where we're at right now. Alright. I'm happy with that. I'm sure where the tires are at. Ooh, look at that. Nice and balanced. Only off one KPA there, so it's pretty sweet. Alright, well that was fun. I don't know, just another really good car by AC, you know, a lot of fun to drive, and pretty good platform. Uh, feels good, and yeah, fun to drive. Alright guys, well I will uh, see you next time. Later.